Okay, my friends, usually I use a little bit of humor, but there will be none today. I am talking about somebody that is very close to me that has advanced melanoma and needs, I think, something, I believe, a fecal transplant could, could help. Now, this is fecal microbiota transplants help patients with advanced melanoma respond to immunotherapy. Well, guess what? They did, and it did help. However, instead of using good fecal transplant material, they used it from people that already had melanomas but had responded. That's not the good stuff. They have already, they were susceptible to getting melanomas and then they responded better after they had treatments. So they figured, oh, well, these are the people that are going to help. No, it's just having good microbiota. I am going to ask for a test. Just do regular people with good fecal transplants from people that are very, very healthy and just and then see what happens and do blind studies, placebos, whatever. I don't care how they do it, but we need to do this. These fecal transplants appear to cure just about everything. C. diff, which people just die from, there's nothing you can do for people. They do these, they get better. My doctor is going to do my shoulder surgery. His wife had C. diff, same thing. She almost died. Now, she only took pro probiotics, I guess. But some will, will get better with just probiotics. But a fecal transplant, that is the bomb. That baby is the way to do it. And they right now, you can't get them. I think it's uh, illegal. All right, the probiotics is nothing more than basically just like a poop pill. Now, they have fecal pill effectiveness is similar to the more invasive treatment for stubborn intestinal infections, which is the um, fecal transplant. So the summary is, a clinical trial has shown fecal microbiota transplants is effective in treating C. diff, which is a really deadly disease. Infections, whether delivered by colonoscopy or by the capsules. And right now, I, I don't think you can get any of these things. You know, I, I, you have to have failed all other possible ways of dealing with your C. diff before you become even eligible for having a fecal transplant. Why wouldn't you do that early? Okay, this is an article that um, was out a while back, 2021. Fecal microbiota transplants relieves gastrointestinal and autism symptoms by improving the gut microbiota in an open label study. Now this, if you, and I did read it, it's very detailed and the conclusions are very good and I agree with them 100 percent. It says in the discussion they're talking about trying to better understand the microbiota. Now it had a thera when they did this fecal mi microbiota transplants, it had a therapeutic outcome. That means that it was helpful on autism symptoms and on gastrointestinal disorders because they're, ba they're both like based on the same thing. In addition, that f um, fecal matter transplant also include, induced a desirable effect on recovering the serum levels of 5-HT, GABA, and DA in the autistic syndrome disorder cohort indicating that fecal matter transplant might play an important role in modulating neurotransmitters through the MGB axis. Well, that's the gut axis, microbiota gut axis. Now, it's, it's really the gut bacteria that's created in your gut flows right now through a, a system that's called the interstitium. It's a highway of fluids that are the membranes. The membranes are where this bacteria has to live. It's bacteria bound membrane. I mean membrane bound bacteria. In those membranes live the bacteria. Let me show you and why it protects you. Now if you look it up, interstitium is this. And this was just discovered as a, a completely organ system basically in 2018 because all of this fluid runs through everywhere and they proved this because when you get tattoos on your skin it ends up getting into your livers and kidneys and everywhere else some silver oxides or something but at any rate they know now that this is the highway 
and this is a membrane and that's all it is and they always cover every single different type of layering in your body so your kidneys your organ you know every organ has its own type of membrane and every organ has its own type of bacteria because your kidneys don't have the same chemistry as your lungs as your heart as your pancreas as your appendix your tonsils your nose your everything's different a hundred percent different in everywhere so if any one of those bacteria gets damaged any of them you are what they call a pre-existing condition. You're ready to get invaded. You don't have the bacteria living in here to create one mucus. Mucosa, that's a mucus membrane. What does that mean? It's slime. Stay out of here. Then what else do you have that's protecting you? You have bacteria that's embedded in here that creates catalysts and enzymes. Enzymes are absolutely elegant molecules, and these bacteria live in here, and they float all through here and, and carry things in and out and allow, you know, you, this could be your digestive system and the intestinal lining. Well, you've got to get stuff in, and you've got to get stuff out. That's what bacteria does. Absolutely elegant little creatures, and they do, do literally everything in your body. They create all the, all the chemistry, all the chemistry. And the chemistry in your body is so elegant, you have no idea. Not one single molecule in your body right now is stable. Not a single one except maybe your enamel on your teeth. Every single one of them has to be continuously nourished with oxygen and vitamins and minerals and all of the different glucose and the things that keep your your energy levels up and and keep the blood flowing past them it's just stunning what that interaction is give me some of this i'll give you some carbon dioxide i'll give you some oxygen give me some glucose i'll take out the the, the zinc and all the nasty heavy metals and get rid of them break them down bring them over to the lymph nodes and flush them out get them to the kidneys bring it up there to the heart and the liver and da, 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 da. absolutely phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and the key is, we take antibiotics like, you know, everybody was taking them for a while. I had, that, and I had surgery twice because of it. Now, and just the foods we eat, a lot of them are damaging to this, you know, we're not eating out of the ground, which we should be, but out of a clean ground, clean water, all those things. Anyway, once you damage this, you're in trouble. See diff, you're going to die. If you don't get it fixed up, and the microbiota transplants, that's basically the only thing that can bring most of these people back when they get to the end stage. And it does. Why, why do they have to wait till they get to the end stage? Why don't they give them this in the beginning and see does it help you? I don't think these are very damaging. I have never heard anybody say that they had any really issues from them. So I think it's time to reconsider this fecal matter transplant.